Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you very much for joining Trust Me's latest webinar. Uh, today, we're really excited to have Joseph Feynman, our head of innovation and evangelism, talk about risk and security posture management, the next evolutionary step. So uh, before we get started, I want to mention, uh, we're really excited to sort of talk about a new offering we have for, around uh, Chief Information Security uh, officer offering. And it's something we are launching this week. Um, we're going to have a webinar next Monday, December 18th, 2023, at 12 p.m. Pacific, uh, 3 p.m. Eastern. And so our team, including Yunus Aftab, founder and CEO, Mir Islam, Chief Technology Office, and Clifford Khan, who recently joined us as head of architecture and solutions, will be talking a little bit more about sort of the landscape um, for you know CISOs and how Trust Me specifically can help. In addition, um, I also want to sort of say, uh, please feel free to contact us with any questions at contact at trustme.ai. Uh, visit our website at www.trustme.ai and follow us on social, including Twitter and LinkedIn. So with that being said, let me hand it over to Joseph Feynman, um, who is the head of innovation and evangelism at Trust Me. Uh, previously, J Joseph has been a Gartner Fellow. He's been a chief innovation officer and a chief strategy officer at uh, security startups, including Avocado Systems and Veracode. And so, uh, Joseph, uh, th thank you very much. And we look forward to learning more about RSPM today. Oh, thank you, Larry. Good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. Glad that you're here. Happy to be here with you. Uh, this webinar continues on the foundation that we built on the previous webinar, and the subject of it is the evolution of uh, security, specifically security posture management. And to be even more specific, just to uh, focus on one particular area, we're selecting application security as one of the best examples that can be followed to see the evolution of security. Well. We would speak of two dimensions of this uh, of the evolution. The first one is evolution of detectors. It started quite some time ago, I would say about 15, 18 years ago. And uh, the industry has been building detectors to figure out, to find security vulnerabilities in the application. One of the earliest examples of such a detector was SEST, Static Application Security Testing a detector that was capable of detecting vulnerabilities in the code that you're writing. And yet another one that emerged at the very same time, probably even a bit earlier, DEST, dynamic application security testing. The technology can detect vulnerability in the running application. The, you, your testing application, it's running and you detect security vulnerabilities there. And then the thread continues. The next one, most popular today, software composition analysis detector that finds open source components in your application and figures out whether they're legal or legal, where they're up to date or not up to date, and most importantly, are they secure or insecure? And that continues with another detector, IS, interactive application security testing, and REST, which is detection and protection in one bottle, runtime application self-protection. And the API testing technology with the detector of API or rather insecure API in your applications and infrastructure as the code tester and container tester. So that evolution continues. And every time through one of those detectors, we had a better look, better understanding, better visibility of the posture of your application. And yet, it was not sufficient. People, users, industry, startups realize that each of those detectors give just a solid view in the subject. Therefore, a different evolution has started. The evolution of aggregators. The aggregators of the data that detectors provide an ability to collect data from all those different detectors in one single repository and have a broader view. An example for application security space of such an aggregator is ASPM, Application Security Posture Management, which is a repository that collects data from various detectors and enables broader view and analytics. Well, let us see the evolution from somewhat different angle uh, 
every time the purpose of adding another detector in our aggregator is to offer a broader, more holistic view in the enterprise. So the growth from siloed view into more and more holistic view. And what we've just reviewed, application security testing technologies, they are a great example of uh, beginning of such an evolution, detectors evolution. Technologies such as SAS, DEST, and SPA that we second ago reviewed, they started emerging around 2005, a little years, a few years before, a few years later. What was so special about these technologies? First of all, they're all great. They're all absolutely mandatory to get information, to get an understanding of the posture of your application. And yet, they are single source technology, meaning that you're typically, well, or very often, you're using just one of these detectors. You're using just SEST or just DEST or just software composition analysis. And altogether, all these sources are homogeneous. They are giving you insight into security posture. That is true. But that is insight only through the lens of nothing else but application security. Because this data is homogeneous, there is no correlation. You cannot correlate. Well, it's very hard to correlate SEST and DEST, for example. And even if it's possible, which is not quite practical, nevertheless, it is, you cannot correlate with another data that is together heterogeneous. Therefore, there is no contextualization. It's hard for you to make a decision based on the data that are not correlated. And therefore, the visibility is silent. Clearly, it is silent. It is limited to just application security testing through the application security view. And as uh, I said, Joseph, just interrupt real quick. I don't know if you mean to be sharing your slides, but you're not sharing right now. I'm not sharing. No, you're not, you're not sharing your screen right now. Oh, why haven't you told me earlier? Though, of course, it's my mistake. Okay, now now it's sharing. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, shall I start from the very beginning, or I will continue in any case? So. The application security testing represents just one single view. There was the evolution of this process was creation of application security orchestration correlation market ASOC, and nowadays I believe it's ASPM application security posture monitoring that most likely will consume the ASOC market. So. This is the market, not of detectors, but aggregators, technologies that actually get information from all these sources on the left. So now we have a multi-source technology that collects data from a variety of sources, from different SES, from different SES, from different SCA, and all of them. And in addition to that, this new market has realized the necessity to have some heterogeneity. So it started getting some data from technologies related to not application security, but to adjacent area of DevSecOps or DevOps. It started getting information from uh, issue management systems such as Jira or CICD systems such as Jenkins, for example. So e technologies that would provide context to security issues detected on the left by different SAS test and SCA. So now you are capable of providing some correlation, correlation between different parts of heterogeneous data between security and DevOps, for example, and start making some contextualization, making contextual assessment. So the visibility now, the insight, the holisticism somewhat improved. And that is a big step forward. Uh, expansion, not only of detector space, but of aggregation space as well. Well, the question comes up, what comes next? Honestly, we cannot believe that ASOC and ASPM are the end of the evolution. So let us try to figure out 
what is next step and we'll offer you our version of the next step of security posture management evolution. But first of all, let's dip a little, dive a little deeper into the problems that we are facing. And the first thing is non-holistic approach that we're typically getting when we're using our detectors and then bring them to aggregators. This approach is a siloed approach. For example, you're looking just for security issues or just for risk issues. There is a mega market of security technologies, including those that I've just described, like application security watches with its SAS, DEST, and SCA. And there is a risk market, the one that provides different scorecards and assess some third party risk to your organization. And they are provided by different vendors in different markets, and they do very different things. Although risk and security are close, and very often we even confuse in our definition of risk for security, nevertheless, as you can see, they exist in two different silos. But that is existent in the silos is just a part of the problem. The problem is actually much worse. It's not just silos. It is silos in silos. For example, you're dealing with security and you are looking at application security and it is provided by very separate uh, group of vendors. And then network security provided by another set of very different vendors than AppSec and then endpoint security and so on. They are all sub silos or silos in silos of security. And every time when you're choosing one of those, you're getting great insight, but only within quite a limited silo. With the risk, yeah, the very same story. Typically, these vendors in the risk space, they would offer you insight into third party risk and compliance risk, they provide you scores but they are not giving a very important risk information, such as risk of DevSecOps project efficiency. This is a very clear risk, for example, of projects being delayed. You detected security vulnerabilities, just as one example, you need to fix them by how long that project will be affected, how long it will be delayed. Uh, there is uh, another type of risk, risk of human resources and legal errors and staff optimization. You're trying to optimize your staff. Well, even down to, you know, reallocating people and you cannot clearly justify and you're moving and removing people based on unclear criteria, which very often result in legal actions against your organization. And yet another risk, a risk of individual skills and efficiency. Let's say you're detecting security vulnerability in applications in your endpoint, in your networking infrastructure. Who is actually responsible in your staff of making this security vulnerabilities? These issues should be detected. They should be brought in into some aggregated view, analyzed, and then decision, the optimal decision should be made. And my last example here, asset utilization risk. Very often we are investing in our assets such as databases, such as endpoints, such as servers, and they might be underutilized. So you are risking over-investing in something that is underutilized. So you can see that there was a silo of security. There was a silo of risk, although they're supposed to be very close. There are sub-silos in each in those areas. What is the outcome of all of it? Well, the, the outcome is that you're collecting in each case homogeneous data just related to AppSec or just related to third parties. They are not correlated because it's, well, there is no much sense of correlating homogeneous data. They're lacking context it's hard to grasp the posture of um, security and risk in your organization. And therefore, the visibility is not holistic. So non-holistic approach to data aggregation, 
to the Silas and Silas in, is one of the very serious issues that we're facing. There's another one, assessment problem, how, what we do with the data. This question comes very often. Are we collecting too little data to make a decision? Or are we collecting too much data? And if it's too late, little data, well, people complaining, we don't have enough data to make a conclusion, no enough data for a comprehensive assessment. We have to collect more and more and more. Well, when you're collecting more and more and more, another question comes up, well, I'm having too much data, so I'm actually lost in the ocean of data, and I cannot grasp the posture of an enterprise. I'm lost. So what is the conclusion? Both statements are actually correct. So what is the conclusion for the, for the dilemma that we are facing and what could be our solution? And I can point to two pieces of solution. One, you still have to be collecting a maximum practically possible number of heterogeneous data classes, for example, application security and network security and third party risk and efficiency risk and so on. Collect maximum of it. So you're really getting an ocean of data, but not to get lost in it. You have to be able to compose a single score or at least a very limited number of score that would define the posture. So just looking at that score, you're capable to understand, are you in good shape or in a bad shape. And then if you see one or another, you can drill down into details using that ocean of data that you collected. So maximum number of heterogeneous, heterogeneous critical here, data and single or limited number of scores that enable you not to get drawn into the ocean of data. Is this sufficient collecting a great number of data and scoring them? Well, unfortunately not. There are two more things that are required. One is the correlation and another one, contextual assessment. Well, correlation is establishing relationships between different data types, ideally heterogeneous data. And when you do this, when you're bringing this heterogeneous data together through correlation, you enable to bring together different aspects of your enterprise. For example, risk and security, it might be more and more, and you can drill into different aspects of that. And when you have this correlation established, that correlation is the basis for contextual assessment. Now you have a problem and you have a context. So contextual assessment is analyzing not just event in its isolation, but always along with circumstances that made that event happen. If you do not just an assessment, but contextual assessment, that makes your assessment credible, justified, analyzed from all different aspects. Uh, let me give you one example of it. Let's say you're running application security. You have all those detectors. You're bringing results in your uh, security posture monitor repository you detected vulnerability. That is great. Now you know you have to fix that. But if you correlate it with data with DevSecOps and you establish a couple of things, one of them, you can, or actually you should now, knowing application security and DevOps, you have to reassess the deadlines of delivery, of project delivery, because now we have security vulnerability that they could be fixed. By the way, uh, you might not know, or maybe you do, that fixing, uh, the statistics shows that fixing severe vulnerability in application that's already in production takes somewhat between four to seven, sometimes up to nine months. So you have to reassess your project deadlines. And you can do it only if you have information from application security and another type of information data regarding the efficiency of your project. And you can do yet one more thing. You can find out who actually in your team made the security vulnerabilities. And for example, you can, well, put them through security, secure development training, or you can, uh, well, 
remove them from security sensitive projects. So there are two more things that are added to solution as you can see, it's correlation and contextual assessment. So let me reiterate, there are four things that we have to be doing. We have to be collecting maximum, pra ma maximum practical number of heterogeneous data classes, give them a single score that defines the posture, correlate data before that, and use contextual assessment to come up with the optimal decisions. So we're coming actually to risk plus security. The evolution of security posture management could be moving in several directions. And I believe that the most important one, maybe the closest one, the lowest, if you wish, hanging fruit is to continue bringing different risk, different security issues together, application security, network security, endpoint security, but also start bringing together in the same context, bringing risk issues as well. So we have to be collecting through our detectors and then aggregate application security, network security, endpoint security, and so on, as well as risks such as DevOps productivity, asset utilization risk, inefficiency of DevSecOps teams, third-party risk. We have to, to aggregate this heterogeneous data. We have to add business context, such as reputation of third-party assets, mission criticality of application, class, is it enterprise class application or just departmental or group class, smaller, much smaller class of your application. Cost comes here as well. You aggregate all this data, not just security, not just risk, but risk and security and the business data. You correlate them. That gives you insight into all aspects of your, at least IT organization, but even broader. You conduct contextual assessment. You are finding not only an event, but the reasons that brought event to happen. You assign this trust score, you calculate the score that would enable you not to get lost in the ocean of data. So you would immediately understand, immediately grasp the posture of your organization. And that's how you get holistic visibility. And you do it continuously on the continuous basis. So let me complete that slide, that chart that we've seen five minutes ago. Same chart, you remember the first step of the evolution detectors, application security testing, great technology, but single source, no just homogeneous data, no correlation or very little one, no contextualization. And therefore, visibility is silent, silent to, let's say, application security. The next step, aggregation, aggregation of the data collected here by security scanners. Now you have multiple sources. You have some additional data from DevOps. There is a little correlation, which is a great step forward, some contextualization, and therefore holistic visibility somewhat improved. We believe that the next step is that RSPM, risk and security posture management bringing together from multiple sources, security and risk. Therefore, you're getting heterogeneous data. You're capable of correlating them, providing uh, contextualization. And because of contextualization, you're capable to come up with optimal decisions. The visibility becomes much more holistic. And with that, I will finish my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Great, uh, th th thank you so much, Joseph. Uh, really appreciate you, you taking the time to sort of uh, sort of present this. Um, before we wrap up, I wanted to sort of ask you a, a couple of questions. Um, first of all, uh, I guess, what, what do you think, um, why is application security the target uh, for, for, for a lot of people here in the security space? You know, one thing is that it's very personal. I really love application security. But to be more specific, well, I can tell that application security is the one of the newest addition to the overall stack of security. Application security has emerged 
just about 15, 18 years ago, unlike network security, um, that is probably 40 or so years old, endpoint protection that is pretty much as old, um, encryption, data security. This is the newest one. There was the greatest area for innovation in that space. And we see dramatic growth over the last several years of application security has been growing from, I remember 15 years ago, the size of AppSec testing market was somewhat about 60 million dollars in nowadays is six billion dollars so the growth rate is the highest among pretty much all the risk and security areas so if you're looking for something really demonstrative representative it makes sense to look at uh, application security and that is the kind of serious reason i'm looking at uh, application security as a great example great uh, the second question I have is, you know, what, what do you think can be the role of artificial intelligence in, in RSPM? Well, uh, the application security, oh, sorry, AI, of course, could be applied in these spaces. I can give you just several examples, and they are, well, pretty obvious. For example, uh, speaking of risk, uh, part of the risk could be reputation risk. Are you dealing with the best reputation-wise uh, product provider or not? Uh, are you dealing with the best product-wise service provider or not? Application uh, Artificial intelligence enables you to apply AI models to calculate the reputation score of different uh, service providers. So it might be able to train to take into consideration a variety of aspects such as financial standing of the vendor, uh, standing on the market, um, uh, the amount of traffic to the website and many, many others. By the way, we do this at trustme.ai where taking into consideration in our AI models more than a dozen different criteria bring them together using AI and we're calculating score. If you know that the rating, the, the reputation rating, then you can easily calculate cost per reputation and see whether your selection of tools is optimal or not.